So Donald Trump and Alex Jones and a whole lot of other people are no longer allowed on Twitter, but Justin Trudeau is. He's the prime minister of Canada. Now, that's unfair, of course, but it's also interesting because Trudeau is way crazier than any of the people who have been banned from Twitter that we're aware of. But you can see him think in real time, and that's kind of cool. It tells you a lot. He just sent this tweet out, quote, people across the country are lighting candles to honor indigenous women, girls, and two SLGBTQQIA++. Now, that's a group, a so-called community. <laughs> Most of these communities, by the way, consist of people who've got nothing in common with each other and don't even know each other. There are no meetings or anything. They're not real communities. They're constructs of politicians. But whatever. What the hell is he talking about? What are the chances Justin Trudeau has no idea what he's talking about? He's not even sure how you're supposed to say that acronym. Watch. I will never apologize for standing up for an LGDP, uh, LGT, LBG, LGBTQ2 plus uh, kids' rights. It's all pretty great. Also, a little terrifying. God Saad is a very interesting personal professor, author of the new book, The Parasitic Mind, how infectious ideas are killing common sense. And boy, is that true. Professor, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your, your being here. So what do you make of the Prime Minister of Canada coming out with a vehement defense of, an endorsement of, a group whose name he can't even pronounce or define? Well, it's part and parcel of his uh, moral confusion and moral hypocrisy. When he was a parliamentarian, when Stephen Harper was Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau got very upset because Stephen Harper referred to honor killings and child bride and female genital mutilation as barbaric. Justin Trudeau wasn't angry at those acts. He was angry that Stephen, Bar uh, that Stephen Harper would call them barbaric. So that gives you a sense of his moral compass. So this, it's not about protecting human rights, which I think all of us would be strongly for. I certainly would. It's about elevating some groups and hurting others. In, indeed. Uh, and I mean, I see this all through my scientific career. It is no longer about judging the, uh, when you apply for a scientific grant, it's no longer about the, the, the worth of the scientific application. It's about whether you uh, adhere to certain diversity, inclusion, and equity uh, edicts. So these uh, dreadful ideas, these parasitic ideas, have real-world consequences. They start off in the esoteric world of the ivory tower, but eventually they break out, and now they infect every nook and cranny of our societies. I, I hope that our audience will take a look at your book in which you lay this out in some great detail, but I just have to sum up by asking the obvious question. Is this slowing down, or is it picking up steam? Do you see an end to this? Uh, I, I, I mean, it is uh, picking up, regrettably, but I am optimistic in that I truly believe that the silent majority despises this stuff. If we can activate our inner honey badger and speak in unison, we'll get rid of these parasitic ideas by next Tuesday. If we don't, it'll be a slow train ride to hell. <laughs> what a great... I'm glad I asked that question. What a great... If we can activate our inner honey badgers, we can end this by next Tuesday, but if we don't, it's a train to hell. Well, that's... Put that on the fridge. Godson, appreciate your coming on. Congrats on the book. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.